What's going on guys, this is Tucker Jobs Gaming and welcome back to Tactic Testing and Instructions. So, this tactic is a nap tactic, it's the fire and water. I'm going to try it out on a few underdogish kind of teams. Uh, Premier League, Brighton, uh, League 2, Cambridge and all the way to the Vanarama North with Kettering. So hopefully everything goes well and uh, stay tuned for the instructions. Right, so welcome back, guys. This is the tactic. It's a four-one-two-three uh, asymmetric kind of tactic. A little bit, a little bit chaotic, if uh, if I do say so myself. But uh, they these tactics are the ones that tend to do absolutely fantastic. Uh, before we get started, yes, I've had an haircut, looking a bit fresh. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, full name for this tactic is Fire and Water 23221 um, P94. So with the top team, they've got 94 points. So it does work with top teams. He always tries it out with Liverpool or similar. Uh, and they do absolutely fantastic. And the P350 is, I think they did it over so many games on a massive test league. Uh, they did absolutely fantastic and uh, raked it in. So yeah, this is it. Um, instructions for players then. So pressing forward. Attacking midfielder left, attacking midfielder centre, winger left, winger right, inverted wing back left, inverted wing back right, deep line playmaker, four plane defender left, four plane defender right, and the sweeper keeper, the instructions for the corners, set pieces, and so on and so forth. Um, defending right and left corners. And attacking left and right corners. As you can see in this top right corner, it is the Beowulf corner instructions. So they should, actually, they should do great. Then we look at the free kick instructions. So defending right and left. And from here, routine one, we're looking like it could be all um, standard. So there's nothing to change there. Go on attack. Again, that's all standard. So there's nothing. Whatever. And then throwing instructions. Defending right and left. And attacking left and right. And this is also the Beowulf 442 throwing instruction as well. So it's the long throw. Uh, very dangerous sometimes. And going to get the job done. Yeah. So that's the, that's the instructions for the players and for the set pieces. It's a tick attack tactic. Uh, mentality is attacking. Uh, in possession, fairly wide footballing. Uh, passing to space. Overlap left and right. Play out defence. Slightly shorter passing directness and higher tempo. So obviously you're going to aim to... Keep possession and working ball into the box so you're not going to waste your shots you're going to wait for the opportune moment to shoot and uh, yeah your players have got free reign to run at the defense and counter press and counter attack in football as is with a lot of uh, tactics on uh, fm20 and uh, your goalkeeper's instructions is to distribute it to your fullbacks out of possession using offside trap much higher line of engagement much higher defensive line uh, defensive width is narrow Use title marking, extremely urgent press and intensity, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and uh, get stuck in. You know the gist now, guys. You know the gist. So, uh, yeah, this is the tactic. This is the best 11, apparently. I'll probably swap in, obviously, Knockout there for this bad boy there. Got a name and a half, ain't he? And then Ben White would probably go for Webster... Yeah, let's just say Webster. So yeah, this is the supposed best 11 for Brighton in the Premier League using this tactic. And then Cambridge in League 2. This is the supposed best 11 for them. And then Kettering. Uh, I have had someone on my comments. William, his name is. It is William. Um, wanting a tactic that involves Kettering because he has been struggling. Uh, so I said that I'll put this one in, uh, just for him. So there you go. Uh, so yeah. That's the best 11 for Kettering. Uh, hopefully it all goes well. I'll see you in January for a quick recap. Right then, we are in January and we're going to start off with Brighton. So a quick recap with them. They are currently 9th, halfway through the season or just after halfway, uh, which ain't too bad. Um, it's not an amazing going to break the Premier League kind of tactic or it doesn't look like it so far with Brighton. It may do with other teams. Uh, but I am just testing it with Brighton in the Premier League this time around. Um, you've got no players in the player stats top threes. Um, you are 
ninth is all right. You predicted 15th, so you are still in the position where you are above expectation. Uh, eight wins, five drawn, and seven losses with minus two goal difference. So it's not going so great with them at the minute, uh, but it's still better than expected. So you can still class that as you're doing all right. Um, so yeah, currently in the competitions, uh, knocked out in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup by Chelsea. That's understandable. Chelsea obviously are a stronger team to Brighton. It's always hard when you do um, tactics in the Premier League because, yes, yeah, sometimes you get the tactics that absolutely storm it and you get the underdogs doing absolutely amazing. But they have to be amazing because if, they, if they're not, the difference in quality between Brighton's team and the top six, top seven is massive. And it can be really tough to break into the top six. So... Um, yeah, that's their recap, and yeah, not a lot really to show you about Brighton, really. Uh, let's go to Cambridge, League 2. So Cambridge are absolutely smashing it. Cambridge are actually predicted 21st, all right? So Cambridge are predicted 19 places down than what they currently are. They are playing amazing, all right? They're currently second, 114 drawn eight, only lost two. They have had the best... Um, defense really by only losing two games in the whole league at 50 points you've got sam smith the striker on 11 top of the uh, three stats and then you've got mizuni third place 7.33 on average rating daniel jones on the assist with eight joint second uh, and a couple of players obviously in the yellow card so yeah they're doing absolutely fantastic competitions knocked out in the second round by Ipswich in the fa cup understandable once again uh, knocked out in the third round. It was the third round. That's not too bad for a, a League Two team by getting knocked out by Blackburn Rovers. So you have just raked in a little bit of money by getting further in the cup. And uh, Leeson.com trophy uh, knocked out in the second section, second round by Oxford United. Oxford are a league above, so it's always expected that the teams or who are obviously leagues above you are going to win, regardless of uh, what great tactic you have. So, yeah, they're doing absolutely fantastic. There's nothing to moan at about being second place when you are predicted to come 21st. Nothing whatsoever. And finally, in the Banorama North, Kettering. What? What? First place. Uh, 118, drawn four, lost two on 58 points. The goal difference of 40, the highest in the league. Even though they have the highest in the league goal difference, they haven't got to play in the top three goals. Um, they've got average rating, Marcus Kelly and Ben Milnes, um, 7.87 and 7.55, first and third. Assists, Marcus Kelly, 15th, first. And you've got Marcus Kelly, again, player of the match, joint first. Paul White, the goalkeeper, 14 clean sheets. Uh, and also a player in the uh, top of the uh, top of the list on yellow cards as well. But, yeah, you can't. You, there's nothing whatsoever you can own at that. The uh, lad that's been talking to me on, on some of the comments uh, really struggles, says he just can't, football managers just don't like Kettering doing well, just don't like Kettering doing well, but, uh, well, here's a tactic for you, it's fire and water, mate, fire and water, and doing absolutely amazing, see how they're doing the competitions, English FA Cup knocked out in the fourth qualifying round, and uh, English FA Trophy got knocked out by Halifax Town, so they're not in any of the cups, but it doesn't matter, because aim of the game is to raise them in the leagues and that is exactly what you want to do and currently they are first so you are doing it big big yes so yeah that's that's the recap i'll uh, see you at the end of the season see how everything finishes up right welcome back to the end of the season and we're going to start off in the premier league with brighton so they ended up finishing eighth which it's not bad it's not fantastic, but for a team like Brighton, you have improved. You have pretty much jumped seven places above expectation. And um, yeah, there's nothing really to moan about that whatsoever. And let, unless you're one of those people that like to have a tactic that brings out the, the um, individual um, performances in a player. So yeah, you may have a tactic where you do all right and you've got one striker who bangs in 40 goals. Doesn't quite work that way for Brighton, unfortunately. Uh, but you do have one of your players topping the list for assists, and that's Pascal Gross. Um, 11 assists, got top. Um, above William and Madison, apparently. Um, so none of the actual main players got there. You would think like De Bruyne would get there or uh, Salah. Uh, so yeah, um, it, you, want, you want to do better. 
don't you? When 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 you put a plug and play tactic in for a team like Brighton, you think, yeah, I'm gonna get top six, top six. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen, um, and it wasn't. It was quite a big difference between eighth and seventh as well. Sixteen points. Uh, you got minus two on the goal difference, so your attacking capabilities haven't gone great for this tactic. Maybe if you are going to use this tactic, get some loans in. That's the beauty of being a Premier League club. The fact that you can already get top quality loans in, um, and th that that might help with the attacking threat a little bit more. And uh, yeah, hopefully you get European qualification in some form, um, whether it be through cups or uh, through the league. So, anyway, let's have a look at the competitions. So, fifth round by Sheffield United in the FA Cup. Poor game there, poor game. And we already know that we got knocked out by Chelsea. Uh, let's have a look at the schedule. Some of the big teams. So, we did absolutely amazing in friendlies. Look, 5-1, 6-1, 4-0. Some decent teams in there. Not great, but Ajax lost 1-0. Ajax is probably the biggest team there. So, we had a great start to this in, the, in the first month of the, um, of the season. At Newcastle 5-2. Uh, big teams, any big teams, 5-1 against Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup. Drew 1-all against uh, Liverpool and Tottenham, 0-0, so they're half decent. At the end of the day, if you if you manage to get any points from Liverpool, is is good. Um, you lost against Chelsea, beat Leicester, not bad, not bad. Uh, and then you got smashed by Man City, Arsenal and Wolves. Um, decent result there. You lost against Tottenham, so you're not really beating the big teams. But again, you drew against Liverpool to all. They so haven't dropped any points against Liverpool, which is a big plus. It's potential. Um, any other big teams drew against Man City. So yeah, you, you, it's in there. Something's in there that's working. But it's also very inconsistent. But that might just be because it's Brighton. We already know that it's done amazing in tests for Nap amazing uh, with the Liverpool and top teams and elite teams so yeah it's just about turning Brighton elite get those loans in um, let's have a look at the squad your best player was Dale Stevens on three games so we're not going to count him let's count this guy proper uh, five and five 39 outs played 7.23 absolutely amazing ish um, as a defensive midfielder that's pretty good going didn't create a lot of chances uh, but he still contributed when he needed to. And then you've got Pascal Gross, uh, 7 and 13. 13 assists is not bad at all as an attacking midfielder. Centre did, did pretty well. Uh, your striker, though, uh, Mupe, 24 and 4. 24 goals is nothing to shout, nothing to be mad about. Um, you are a very low, not low quality, what would you say? Not as high quality as the top 6, top 10 uh, teams in the league. So, yeah, just a. Uh, get a player to score more than 20 goals is awesome he's not he's a pretty decent striker he's only 23 um work rate 16 is very good as a pressing forward so yeah he should have basically fit this tactic perfectly um so he's done pretty well might just need might just need the uh, people behind you doing a little bit better um so yeah anyway everyone else is knocking around nine nine and seven for uh solly marsh or march um as your midfielder left, so that's pretty good. Only played a 7.03 though. You would think by getting 9 and 7, he would get a little bit more of the average rating high. Um, and then you got this guy here. Uh, McAllister is your other second um, attacking midfielder. 5 and 6, you'd probably want that to be a little bit higher, to be fair. Uh, you want to match in Gross, really. Uh, 7 and 13, they're both there for a reason. Um, so yeah, that's them. Let's have a look at the tactic analysis for Brighton then. 86 goals scored and 67 conceded. That's not good. I don't like that. Not one bit. Um, definitely, definitely need to sort out your goal scoring threat. You want to be hitting the 90s or 100 East, especially for a plug and play tactic. Uh, but like we said, it might be for a team that is um, elite because it's all right when you put in these tactics on the twos, panoramas, and everything like that because, in a way, the whole league is the same standard whereas the premier league you have there's a big gap between the top teams and the small teams uh, world-class players to players that could probably still play in the championship and premier and premier league and don't really matter there's not a lot of quality there uh, so yeah you definitely need to sort that out and cut goals conceded as well so it's an all-round sort out for brighton if you want to use this tactic but that's also expected you are brighton you need to build your team 
Um, there's the goal uh, locations and assist locations. So let's go to Cambridge next in League Two. So here we are in League Two, and Cambridge got promoted. Cambridge were predicted to come pretty low down in that table and uh, to get promoted second place as well. And they weren't far off first. Absolutely fantastic. 26 wins, 14 draws, and only lost six. They lost the least games out of everyone in that league. Um, you've got a player, Sam Smith, your striker, came second with 24 goals. Uh, Mizuni, average rating, 7.3. Daniel Jones, assist, 14, came third. Mizuni again, joint second on player of the matches. And all round did pretty, pretty great, to be fair. Uh, you'll be definitely happy about using this tactic and the Cambridge coming second place. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look at the competitions. Uh, FA Cup, knocked out. Not, oh, yeah, we've already seen all this, haven't we? Knocked out and everything. So, yeah, don't matter. At the end of the day, you are playing in League 1 next uh, next year. Awesome. Uh, schedule some of the big teams. Is there really big teams in League 2? Uh, let's have a look at some of the big score lines. So, we've got 4 through here against Stevenage. Uh, Plymouth, they came top of the table. We were 1-1-0. One, one, Let's have a look. 3 nils, 4 1s, 3 1s, 4 nils. So you're picking up some decent results. Definitely, definitely had an amazing start to the season. The 2 nils, 4 nils against Oldham. A crew, Mansfield, 3 nil apiece. So yeah, you're picking up some brilliant score lines. Um, not losing a lot of games at all. Obviously, we've already seen that. Uh, let's have a look at the squad then. So not a lot of greens there. Not a lot of players playing above 7 which is worrying in a way but also is it because you're in a such a low level league that you're you're not getting the sevens uh, but anyway your best player was uh, on loan idris el mizuni uh, seven and 11 assists created 18 he was your defensive midfielder and he scored seven goals and assisted 11 and chances was 18 so that's, that's pretty good going for a defensive midfielder uh, sam smith your striker 28 goals and 4 assists, which is great. Taft, 7 and 3 is your centre-back. 7 goals as a centre-back is pretty good. You are you have got some decent instructions, though, with the Beowulf um, set-piece instructions. Um, your midfielder left, Dunk, 8 and 11. Midfielder right, 10 and 5. So your midfielders, your wingers are doing absolutely fantastic, especially for Cambridge. Then you've got Rolls, one of the attacking centres, 13 and 6, which is awesome. And your other attack in the centre, 6 and 7. So you've dropped down again. Is it something about those centres that aren't doing it absolutely amazing where one is and one isn't? Maybe something to uh, tinker with. Um, your goalkeeper. Didn't get any goals or assists. I don't know why I even mentioned him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everyone played awesome. Uh, Daniel Jones, your wing back left as well, 16 assists. That's awesome. Amazing. Uh, so, yes, everything went absolutely fantastic. We can always see, obviously, Daniel Jones here. Um, it's third place. So, yeah, let's have a look at the tactic analysis then of this uh, of Cambridge. So, goals, 88 and 55. Again, for a second place team, only 88. It's not as attacking as I thought it would be. Obviously, if anyone else has ever downloaded a firing ice tactic before, they do absolutely amazing. I've used some, I've actually used some in my personal games, and the and the great attacking threat is far surpassing this one. Um, but that might just be down to my tests, right? It does not mean that this will happen on yours. You may be better, worse, or the same. Uh, these are just showing possibilities of what can happen or possible results. Um, and total conceded, conceded is 55. Again, for a top team, you finished second. Right, you didn't lose that many games and you still conceded 55. You might want to drop that down into the 40s. Would have been more acceptable, but... Yeah, it's all right. At the end of the day, it's all about promotion. All about promotion at the end of the day with Cambridge. And uh, you got it. So, yeah, there's the goal locations. And assist locations. Dead heavily on this left-hand side. Awesome. Uh, so, finally, Kettering. Hopefully, William. Hopefully. Boom. Oh, no. No, came second. They obviously got into the playoffs. So we'll have a look at those in a second. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's he was saying that football managers completely against Kettering. They're not going to do well. They never do well. Um, well, they've done well. So hopefully this tactic will give you some insight of of something to use and um, start building on. Hopefully 
everything goes all right for you. Um, but the standout guy for uh, Kettering was Marcus Kelly. Um, average rating, 7.55, came second. Assist, 21 assists for Kettering. That's absolutely insane. Top of the table for him. And Paul White, clean sheets for Kettering, 22 games without conceding. Uh, and you've also got a couple of players in the uh, yellow cards. But again, um, like Brighton, you haven't got any players in the goal stats, which is which is a shame. It's always nice when you see, yeah, I've got top scorer in the league. I've got top scorer in the league. And then if you're a small team and you end up with top scorer in the league, then you can sell them for a lot more money. So they become more valuable. Uh, but 29 wins, 7 draws and only 6 losses. Not bad. 94 points. She was so close. So close to coming first uh, above Kidderminster, which is a shame. And let's have a look. And I've already seen it. The final. Oh, no. He went out in penalties against Gloucester in the final of the playoffs to reach, obviously, the Vanarama National League. Um, but it wasn't meant to be. There's no reason, though. There's no reason whatsoever why this can't be turned around into a promotion. All right? Everything went right. Just a few games. A, a little bit of bad luck that uh, happened because you look at the points between second and third as well. You are asked to pass them. All right, you were battling first place. She was first at Christmas, um, uh, obviously in January. So you just lost a few. You lost a little bit of form, and, and that's what happens. But it's, it's all down to the game. Nothing will automatically say this is going to work. No tactic out there that will guarantee, absolutely guarantee you 100%. 100% that. Yep, this will definitely, definitely work for you. Don't exist don't exist there's tactics out there that do great probability does absolutely amazing no perfect work for every single team no matter what every single game all season you will thrash thrash and win go down to look as well so yeah uh, let's have a look at the uh, competitions but we already seen why am i even showing all these i know i know all these um, schedule let's have a look at some results anyway you've got some picks up some decent results at the end of the day you've got some four nillers in there fours eight one against bamba bridge bamba bridge obviously is not great but eight goals regardless um so some decent results kidderminster nil nil oh no that could have been the game that made it if you just won that game you would have come first oh Feel for you, William. I know you're watching this, and you're gonna think, "Oh no, what did?" Um, so yeah, some good results, but some not not good results. Obviously, Leamington three one, Chester one nil, uh, Telford good result to all, uh, Chester two all, uh, four ones four nil. So you, there's quite a few games where you're banging in four goals, five goals against Southport. So again, the uh, capabilities and the potential is there to have, have a very good tactic on your hand. I think it just certain players need to roll a little bit better. Um, so it needs to be on a, maybe a better quality team at the end of the day with, with, we know that he tests the results and tests the tactics and they do absolutely fantastic uh, shown with us at uh, Liverpool so it does work to some degree with the top teams um, it's all about turning your team into a top team and then adapting to the day so squad there we go a lot more greens there that's what I like to see so your top player was Marcus Kelly your winger left with 10 goals and 24 assists, he did absolutely insanely amazing. 38 chances created, played 7.5 at 9. At half the room, you got Ben Milne, 16 and 6. Daniel Inti, Inti, T, Inti. I don't know if I'm getting that right. Um, 10 and 11. Uh, 24 chances created is your winger right. So the wingers do absolutely insane. They did it all the, all the way through the leagues. They're very well, very good. Um, the, at the end of the day, it's probably a wing play kind of style. Um, it doesn't say you're focusing on the wings, but by having your inverted wing backs and the wingers just above them tells me that you're playing a lot on the left and right hand sides. Then you got your striker, O'Connor, 15 and 9, which is not absolutely amazing. For a striker, you, he hasn't scored the most goals. All right, your attacking midfielder center has 19 and 10. And has he even gone into? No. So he hasn't actually played any games as a striker. He's played all his games as a midfielder, attacking midfielder, and he is the highest scorer. So that might be something to look at. Maybe get a loan in, get a feeder club, 
get a better better get a better loans and uh, hopefully up your attacking strength to finally clinch that first place spot um so yeah anyway let's have a look at the tactic analysis goals there we go that's what i want to see that's what i expect 110 scored and 44 so stats wise Kettering did the best out of all the three teams um 110 goals and 44 that's i'm happy with that that's pretty good pretty good going uh and yeah goal locations and assist locations see there's nothing about those scored and conceded that tells me that everything went wrong because it didn't it didn't that should have been a season winning tactic especially in Banarama north um and it's a shame that kidderminster just did that little bit better just a few results didn't go your way and it cost and just by one point um so yeah goal locations assist locations i've just said so that's three tactics fire and water um three teams sorry hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you enjoyed it william uh and uh yeah please like the video and subscribe uh, and obviously content will always be coming out so don't worry about that see you later bye